everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, today I'm going to be doing another of the straight pour, flower pours, but I am going to try something a little different today uh, with the way that I load my cup. We'll see what kind of result that produces. Uh, so let's talk about the colors that we'll be using for my background slash base coat which is going to be this color. This is uh, Liquitex Basics Titanium White with a touch of Phthalo Blue by Liquitex Basics and Dioxazine Purple. It makes a kind of a pale periwinkle type color. Um, these two, this is the Dioxazine Purple and the uh, Phthalo Blue mixed with DecoArt Americana Decor Scent Enamels in pure white. So that is going to be half Liquitex Basics and half Scent Enamel. Um, this color is a mix of DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in copper and in 24 karat gold. All of these paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And then that mixture is thinned until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. You can see it does make a mound, but it disappears pretty quickly. And it is making a nice thin, even stream off of my stick. If the paint coming off of your stick is thin and thick and thin and thick. If it kind of wobbles a bit, that means that your consistency is inconsistent and you need to do some more mixing. To thin the paints, you can use either water or a mixture of 10% uh, Floetrol to 90% water. If you are a beginner, I recommend doing the Floetrol water mix that will help to keep you from over thinning. Uh, sometimes if you're using these smaller cups, you know, just like two or three drops can be too much. And uh, it just seems like having that little, that little bit of Floetrol in there kind of helps. Um, so uh, I use just water, but in the past I have used a mixture of Floetrol and water. You can use either. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique, all of the things that I can't fit onto a card. Uh, this is a picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique, and here at the bottom you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And then these two boxes can be used as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also at amazon.com. This little nifty contraption that I have here uh, comes from paintpourstore.com. And it's a two piece thing. I'm only gonna be using this piece today. If you would like to get yourself uh, one of these, go to paintpourstore.com. And if you use the code GINA15, you will receive 15% off. Uh, and also, I receive a commission at no additional cost to you. I am an affiliate with Paint Pour Store, also an affiliate with Deco Art. Check out the description box below for all of my affiliate links and coupon codes. Save yourself some money and, you know, help me stay stocked up in paint so I can keep bringing you content. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put some paint in my cup. I'm going to do about two ounces in my pouring cup. Uh, this is a 14, I've got it on my finger, 14 inch square canvas. 
I'm gonna lay down my base coat. I'm gonna try to reserve a bit of this paint to go on top. Okay, so you will see I have already covered my edges. Uh, this is a custom blended color. It would be very difficult for me to match this perfectly. And uh, the way that I mix my paints, especially when I'm using Floetrol, it can be pretty thin and not give you the best coverage on the sides. So I like to cover my sides first. If it does end up being kind of thin on the sides, it's covered. I don't have to come back and try to touch it up later. I don't have to worry about color matching. I like the troubleshoot before there's trouble. So the reason we lay down a base coat is we want the paints to slide around evenly and easily on the canvas if you do not lay down a base coat. Something has to stick to the canvas first and if it's not your base coat it's going to be your puddle that you pour. And as you stretch it out the paint that is on the edge of your puddle is going to stick to the canvas and the paint that is in the middle is going to roll over top of your edges. And sometimes you get some really cool stuff happening on the edges and then you will lose that because you don't have a base coat. Also, if you are using silicone, which I rarely do, but if you are, if you don't put your base coat down first, and the silicone is the first thing to hit your canvas before the paint, it's going to resist the paint and you're gonna wind up with these little bald spots on your canvas. If that is happening to you, it is probably because you're not using a base coat. If you are a beginner and you kind of keep running into problems, I have a troubleshooting video that kind of goes through all of the things that could potentially go wrong with your pour and how to prevent them from happening. Be sure to check the consistency of your paint before you put it in the cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing as this one has. So I will add a couple of drops of water and thin that back out. Even though I just checked these before I started this video, it can just thicken up on you. So you have to be diligent about that. I think I'm gonna do the purple first. And typically I pour from up high and I want all of these to sink and churn, but this time I'm just going to layer it. At least uh, these first two colors. The last color I will allow it to sink. I still want that last, the last color that I put in to end up in the center of the painting. And in order for that to happen, I have to pour from up high and that will allow the paint to sink to the bottom. So pouring from up high, hoping that makes it to the bottom. And then I'm going to take some of this leftover paint here and just go over top. The paints that have the deco art in them, 
dry mat and it has a hydrophobic effect that the hydrophobic effect uh, basically what happens is well, I, will, I will wait to do that part um, what happens is the hydrophobic paints the paints that dry mat will push away other paints all right I'm gonna try to center this I just kind of keep adjusting until it feels right. Okay, I think that feels good. Now, I am going to pour and spin. I'm pouring, I'm not going to pour faster than this vessel can hold. So generally, when I'm pouring into my cup with a straight pour, I want those paints to sink and churn and blend and that gives me the bolder cells that I love so much. But as it's coming out of this vessel, it blends a bit more. So. I wanted to test this to see what would happen if I didn't blend the paints so much in my cup and kind of allowed it to blend as it's coming out of the flower maker. Turning this will give me patterns of colors um, that are more evenly distributed. So if I were to just pour this and let it sit, then I would have one color ending up on one side and then another color on the other side, um, which is fine. That's cool if that's what you're going for. So. It just so happens that's not what I'm going for right now. Don't know if that metallic made it to the bottom of the cup. We shall see. It did, it did, it's coming. Here it comes, okay. So this will end up being my focal point. This will be the center of my painting. And I'm going to try to give it a flowery effect. So I'm going to do like one and a half spins, the golden ratio, the Fibonacci, and then I'm gonna change directions and do it again. Staying in the center. And this should give me a nice rosette effect, hopefully. Ah, poo. Okay. So, points off for the dismount. Let me fix that. Okay, that should be fine. Now, do I want these... Do I want this to come out of this 
if I spin this now with this still on, what is left inside of here will come out in these little spots. Um, hmm. I think I do. I think I do want that this time. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of a twirl just to let that spill out a bit. And I'm going to touch up these sides a bit. It thickens up a little as it sits and giving a little, little extra juice can only help you here. Okay, just going to spread that out a bit. The your base coat can start to dry a little bit and get a bit of a skin on it. So if it's been sitting for a while, it doesn't hurt to touch that up a bit. And don't forget your sides because the paint needs to slide over those edges easily. So making sure that that hasn't set up on you is going to help you as well. Just give it a quick once over. Okay. So far, this is looking very pretty. Going to give this another spin. Get a bit more of that star action in the center. Okay. All right, now let's see. Looks like I need to push it this way a bit. How you have this centered on your spinner can help determine where it's going to come off the fastest. Think of it like a merry-go-round. Um, like the kind that are in the uh, playgrounds. If you are in the center, you don't really get pulled as much. But if you are sitting on the edge... You get yanked around pretty good. So I can see this is having a hard time coming over this edge. So I will just grab some paint and help that a bit. That will help this come off more evenly. Someone asks uh, how I do this without getting dizzy. Uh, well, I'm not actually looking at the center when I'm doing this. I am looking at these corners. I'm keeping an eye on the corner. Because that is what I'm trying to cover. I am glancing at everything just to make sure nothing's going awry. Okay, so this corner is having a hard time, so I'm going to push it in that direction a bit. Uh, 
regarding using a spinner, um, you know, I'm in a rental. I'm, I'm not trying to lose my security deposit. But uh, you don't have to spin it a million miles an hour. You can just spin it slowly. And as you can see, it's not going out past this corner. These corners are going to be the last thing to get covered. Um, and it's not going out past the corners. It doesn't need to be spun so quickly. So basically, if you're afraid to do this because you're afraid of making a mess, you, you can spin this slowly. If you've ever had a painting that was not level as it was drying, you know how much these paintings can move over time. So if it takes you a little longer, that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna take some of these drippings and just kind of help this corner a bit before I give it another spin. I will do this with all of the corners. As mentioned, the corners are hardest to cover. And then when I spin again, it should all blend out and look perfect. Okay, and typically, you know, I do let these sit for a while um, to allow the cells to come up before I spin. Sort of pop any bubbles here. This can help create more cells. Okay. So I have some still beautiful multicolored cells coming up here, but the colors are very vibrant. They haven't blended together as much to give that like 3D bolder effect, but they are very cool looking multicolored cells. Of which I anticipate more popping up. So I'm going to let this sit and do what it's going to do. And then I will bring you in for a close up back in a few. Okay. So here it is. It is coming out looking a lot darker on the camera than it is in person. It is, it has a much softer look than, um, what I'm seeing on the camera here. But uh, some of these cells are really cool. That multicolored, really pretty kind of Mardi Gras in a cell. Really beautiful layering going on in here. And I love the lines, how the, that coppery gold ended up in all of those lines. Some really pretty stuff happening.
So a lot of these cells, the metallic attached. So a lot of the cells are partially that metallic in it. So even though the satin enamels uh, have a tendency to sell, I did mix them up a few weeks ago and that can kind of make a difference. Look how pretty that is. It just glows. Really cool stuff happening. This is so much prettier in person than what I'm seeing on the screen. That center is It just looks so much different in person. But there it is. I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. affiliate links and coupon codes you'll find in there my website ginadeluca.net where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale if you are already subscribed make sure you've clicked that bell so that you receive notifications when i put up new videos the last video i put up i have 163,000 subscribers and it's gotten like 400 views so, I mean, that's a weird number. And, uh, yeah. So, I feel like people aren't being notified. They don't even know that I'm putting stuff up. But, is that it? Oh, uh, also in the description box, you'll find the link to our website. Our, our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. All right. Well, that is it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Go make smart.